before we discuss Bohr's uh, atomic theory, uh, I think it is necessary to mention Albert Einstein's work on photon electrical effect. And on the other hand, after, after uh, Max Planck uh, pop, uh, proposed this uh, formula for photon energy, so that is uh, E equal to, that is uh, E equal to H multiply frequency, or equal H equal to uh, HC divided by lambda. Einstein also, uh, Actually, Einstein was the first person to use the photon uh, concept. Einstein, in 1905, Einstein explained, an, uh, explained another unexplained uh, experiment around the, the turn of the 20th century. And that is uh, what we call the photon electric effect. It's called the photon. Proton electric effect. We'll talk about the photon electric effect uh, uh, on the other video, but here I just uh, write his formula here. Einstein first proposed that uh, the interaction of the of of the of the of the photon with uh, with electron can be described by a simple equation. For example, if the photon, if the photon is, is uh, collide with electron in the surface, in, in the material, can we just use electron to use this a green color to use electron? If they collide with electron, an electron can actually come out if the energy is not enough, okay, with velocity V or kinetic energy, can we say the kinetic energy EK? So Einstein, so this is energy of photon. So the photon come, this is called photon come with uh, uh, this, uh, each photon contain uh, this energy, which is uh, the formula uh, Planck uh, proposed. So Einstein simply rewritten, Einstein simply uh, uh, proposed the energy of pro photon can be transferred to the electron. So part of that will become the energy, the kinetic energy. And another part of energy uh, would be used for the electron to escape of this, uh, of this, uh, of this, uh, the material and become free. So this is called the work function time to work function. So in this simple equation, by using this simple equation, linear equation, Einstein became first person to explain the photon electrical effect. Okay. So from Einstein's uh, study, it is uh, clear that the photon can transfer his energy to electron. So, so basically the energy of electron, the photon energy can be completely transform into the electron. So the implication is that the photon energy, photon energy or photon, because photon represents the energy, photon can be, can be completely absorbed by an electron. Okay. But uh, on the other hand, that Einstein didn't ask, ask this question. If the electron has certain amount of energy, can electron release the energy in the form of photon? Okay. So the question is, can electron can an electron release the energy, release its uh, energy 
in the form in the form of photon of photon okay and uh, that is very interesting question if someone could uh, make this argument okay but uh, it would appear that uh, at that time in 1905 uh, few people really underst understood and uh, what uh, Einstein's uh, interpretation of photon electric effect theory is all about. Okay. So in order to, to, to discover the, uh, the, the atomic theory, uh, we have to wait for, we we'll have, we'll have to wait until we have wait until another experiment, very important experiment that was done by Rutherford which is carried out in 1911. The ice, uh, when the atom was first proposed by Dalton, it is just a simple a ball. By the time when electron was first discovered that the people believe the positive charge is actually evenly distributed inside atom and the electron is just uh, evenly distributed like this one. So this electron, that is a famous plum pudding model. Okay. It's by G.G. Thompson. But the plum pudding model of, for atom was short-lived. Eventually, very soon, by using alpha scattering, alpha particle scattering experiment, Rutherford realized, became the first person to realize that the positive stuff called nucleus is actually located at the center of the atom. And electron is just uh, uh, moved or located, localized uh, around the atom, around the atom. And uh, although the exact orbit of this electron remains unknown. So basically they have, they can imagine that uh, perhaps the electron will orbit the nuclear in the same way as the planet orbit about the sun. So that is uh, what we call the solar system uh, models for atoms. So this is uh, Dalton's model, which is uh, in 19, Oh, sorry, 18, 1803. And this G.G. Thompson's uh, plum putting model, G.G. Thompson, that is uh, in 18, in 1897. This is Rutherford's nuclear model, so nuclear atomic model. So uh, that is a 1911. Okay. So after that, but what because we don't know exactly how the electron actually uh, uh, stay or, 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 or we don't know the track uh, the orbit if there's if it's similar to the, the solar system so the theoretical explanation remain uh, uh, unexp remain to be developed okay. so that is a situation in around 1911 when atom was discovered that actually has a core at the center. This core is called the nuclear. So that is a, that's called the nuclear model. So nuclear model for atom, for atom. All right, so that is a bit of background of what's going on in the study of the microscopic uh, aspect of matter. And here came to the Niels Bohr. And when Niels Bohr picked up these questions and he realized that, well, we have to explain something which is experimentally evident. In other words, do you remember? For the hydrogen, 
we have to explain this position of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, discrete spectrum. That is uh, perhaps just just draw a few of them. So the reason I, this is a nice way to draw the optical spectra of a hydrogen atom. In this case, we just assume that the hydrogen, uh, the hydrogen not only absorb, but can emit. Yeah. Hydrogen can also emit the, the, the photons, not necessarily just absorb. Yeah. So this, this is another way to, to do optical spectroscopy. So in this way, we can actually absorb this bright color, bright side at a particular frequency. But the positions of this uh, of discrete spectra are the same of the what you have obtained in, in, in when we use the, uh, uh, the uh, absorption spectra. Okay. So in this case, we we probably can put these two spectra together. You you can you 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 know what I mean. So basically. If you want to draw uh, absorption, we just discussed absorption spectra, which would be looking like this. So this is absorption, absorption. And uh, so you will see that uh, this is, uh, can we just draw this one? So this is a uh, uh, red color. So there's a red color, so this, oops. So there's a red color. This red kind of this is a spectrum, so a spectrum, and that uh, got origin here, origin here, and then you got the yellow, you got the green, you got the green, you got uh, blue. Oh, dark blue. Dark blue. And then you got the purple. You got the purple. Right. It's making it. Uh, can we just do some fine detail? So let's do something like this. Yeah, we make this looks. Yeah, cut this edge a little bit. Okay. And then we put this uh, frame here. Oh. Moment. Okay. Wait a moment. Okay. So this is a two type of optical uh, spectroscopy. You can either absorb what is called is it called the absorption spectra? It's called absorption spectra. They called absorption spectra, absorption spectra. It's called the emission spectra. Emission spectra. Oops. In the absorption spectra, as I mentioned before, we will see some some components, some uh, photons with specific uh, wavelengths disappear. So that's how we draw the absorption. Can you see the dark one? And uh, and this is how they disappeared. So this is uh, how we uh, how to this how to draw this uh, absorption spectra. So you, when you when you when you detect absorption, you see the missing part of continuous uh, spectra, where you 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 measure emission, and uh, then you see the the photons come emitted by the sample itself, right? Yeah, perhaps I have to make sure what we are talking about by using this diagram. So basically, if you want to. If you want to measure spectra, so we have, in this case, we have to do the 3D diagram. We we'll have to do the 3D diagram. And do the 3D diagram. So if you, you put this gas 
I'll probably just cylinder, right? Put a cylinder here. Get to a cylinder. So you put the cylinder the tube. You put uh, hydrogen gas. You put the hydrogen gas in between. In insert with hydrogen gas. So this hydrogen gas here, and then use uh, the the beam, say from the sun, for example, to come to this is to illuminate, to illuminate this sample. So this is a sample. This is this is this light incoming light come from the from the sun, for example. So just make sure it's just the sun, sun rays, the sun rays come from here. Now, if you want to uh, detect absorption, so what you can do, you can just follow this uh, transmission line. It's called a transmission line. Uh, can we just still use a white color transmission line here? And from here, you can make a piston. You can put a piston here. Uh, this time I just draw a piston, this, uh, this piston here. So you can put this piston here. So you will see the sun will change direction. The sun, the sun will change direction be from different color. Remember, the, the red one will be least be affected by the dispersion. It's called a dispersion. In other words, the change is the angle. The angle changes smallest. But for the purple one, the angle of dispersion is uh, largest. So that would be the purple. It's purple. So in this way, you, you essentially observe the missing part compared with uh, the source. So in this way, you will so, so this spectra will be, you give you absorption. So in this case, in this way, what you obtain is absorption. Uh, absorption spectra. Okay. On the other hand, because you can also detect the uh, the, the 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 sun, the, the uh, uh, diffracted sun uh, from other angles. So if if you come from different angle from here, slightly different from the the pathway. So in this case, the especially perpendicular, so even perpendicular. Then you put the prism here. You put a piston here, so you got uh, the piston here to just like Newton did. What you do is just uh, put a piston here, a triangle piston, prison, sorry, prison, triangle prison. So you will obtain the different, you still can get this all, uh, got a spectra, but this time, this this is is emission. You see, this is a, is this is a purely emission. This could emitted by by the atom, hydrogen atom. This is emitted emitted by hydrogen atom. Atoms. Okay. So in this way, you will probably get uh, got uh, you know uh, different color as well. But uh, it's uh, it's but it's be, in this way, the way you determine the here is what we call uh, emission. So what if you just uh, uh, put a screen over here? If you put a screen over here, or you put a screen over here, in this way, you will obtain what we call uh, emission spectra. It's called emission. Emission, SSION, emission. Okay, so that is a different way to how to detect the uh, absorptions and emission from hydrogen atom. Okay, so can you can of course you can you can you can visualize for example this hydrogen atom, hydrogen atom. In those days when the experiment were carried out, people had no idea about what uh, atom. Uh, looks like, or where is the electron? I have no idea. But uh, after Rutherford experiment, one thing became clear that uh, this uh, lambda, the wavelengths, especially when we is expressed in the in the modified uh, readable uh, readable uh, equation, this uh, lambda, can you see that? So that is objective. So the objective to explain that uh, how 
and it's just multiply. This is a H, HC divided by lambda equal to R. Can we just say, we got, can we just rewrite this formula as R, HC? Let's do it again. We need to know that uh, this formula that is a R HC divided by R equal to the change, equal to the change of the, these two term, which is uh, one is uh, uh, R negative R HC N square minus negative R HC M square. So this is a modified uh, Rydberg equation. Okay. So this is uh, probably the starting point Niels Bohr began you know, to work out this ser series, his series called the Bell Bohr's series. Okay. And before we go to detail, we just uh, outline, I just uh, trying to outline the equation Bohr's used. To explain this formula, especially if we just uh, assume this, this term will represent the energy of hydrogen atom, okay? H C M square. So we need to find the, the total energy of electron in hydrogen atom, okay? So these, the first assumption here is that this aim will, will be the total energy, the total energy. Of the electron, of the electron. Of course, for the hydrogen in the uh, in, in, in atom, they only, only have one electron, okay? The total energy of electron in the in hydrogen atom in a hydrogen atom, hydrogen atom, okay? So this is objective. So if you can, if you can derive the energy formula, which can be written as this form, at the moment, this is, this is empirical formula. So if you can prove that formula of the, of the, of the, of the electron energy, electrons total energy inside atom, hydrogen atom, then you can explain experimental result, okay? I believe this is the objective uh, Niels Bohr, you know, set up for himself. So what he did, he just uh, starting from the Newton's second law. So first the theory he, he, he started, he used is one is Newton's one is Newton's second law. Okay, he, did, he, did, he, he didn't go as far as, you know, uh, the Hamiltonian mechanics or Lagrangian's uh, mechanics. He started from Newton's second law. And Newton's law, second law simply say, the force acting on the electron were equal to the mass of electron multiply his uh, acceleration. So that's Newton's second law. And another formula is used, of course, uh, when we're dealing with circular motion, it's called the circular motion. That is a circular motion. If you are dealing with it, start with a uniform circular motion. This remember is a uniform circular motion. Then the acceleration can be simply written as, as V square divided by R. So that is, uh, these two formulas come from the uh, classical mechanics. In addition, and uh, he, ha he has used the formula for the Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law says that the force between the two charges can be written as the, the constant K multiply the charge. In this case, the charge is uh, the charge e square divided by r square. By the way, I have to, I will 
also put his uh, 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 the, the simplest uh, uh, description of hydrogen atom first. So he's considered that at the center, there's a positive charge, which is a proton, right? And if we just simply consider that the orbital of the of the of electron is a circle, okay, similar to the similar to the uh, to the way the the Earth orbit about the Sun or any planet orbit about the Sun in the in the solar system, then electron is actually doing the circular motion. So that is an important hypothesis. So the electron actually move about. Uh, this, uh, this proton, this electron. So the electron is a negative charge and the proton inside the proton that is a positive charge. So the positive charge. I don't want to use this notation because it confuse, you perhaps you were confused that with uh, positron. So I, I just use the positive, use this, this is proton. Proton is a positively charged. And the radius, so another parameter is the radius. This is radius between the electron and the proton. Can we use R here? And the instantaneous velocity, as you have studied in the high school, can be represented by this, uh, uh, this uh, tangent line direction. So that can we just use uh, the color so to represent the velocity. So that is the velocity, tangent line. Tangent line, hold oh, this too big. Can I use a different color? And uh, is this okay? This side, okay. There'll be instantaneous velocity of electron, okay, which is perpendicular to the normal direction. Uh, the velocity, the magnitude of velocity can be denoted as V, okay, V. And uh, what else? So, uh, yeah, the force, the force is attraction. So, the force, I uh, use a red color, so the force. It's attraction. So if you just focus on electron, this force is uh, uh, toward the center. Okay. So this is this is this is force acting on electron. Okay. Actually, is the force is in uh, electrostatic force between proton and uh, electron because the proton is much heavier. The mass of the of the proton is almost uh, two thousand. Uh, larger than that of the of electron mass, so therefore you can see can you can comfortably assume that, uh, more reasonably assume that, uh, that for the hydrogen atom, and the proton is fixed, okay, or the frame of reference is set on the on the on, on the proton. So in that way, the observer will see the electron orbit about the proton, okay. So the therefore the Electron were doing the continuously uh, uh, circular motion. Okay. And uh, that is a first, that is a three basic formula. Or oh, in addition, we have used the formula for the potential energy, or the energy formula. So that's a total energy. So the, 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 the total energy, how do we find the total energy for the electron? Is the total energy. We know that uh, energy in general can be written as a sum, the total energy can be written as a sum of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy can be written as a half mv square uh, and the plus the potential energy. In this case, potential energy is negative, is equal to Ke square divided by R. So that are the three, the uh, four formulas Bohr's, Niels Bohr applied to build his uh, first atomical models. Okay. In the next talk, I will go to detail to explain step by step how Niels Bohr to build his formula. In particular, how uh, Niels Bohr uh, derived his formula for the total energy of the electron inside hydrogen atom in this form. Okay, see you next time.